Hi everyone, my name is Stephen Poitras, Solutions Architect here at Nutanix, and today we're going to be talking about Nutanix compression. Nutanix offers two types of compression. The first is inline, where essentially the data is compressed before it is written, and then the second is post-process, which is integrated with our ILM framework. So as the data cools down, it'll then be eligible to become compressed. So the first piece that we're going to cover is inline compression. Here we can see our traditional NDFS I.O. path, uh, where we have our op log, extent store, and content cache. Essentially, the same I.O. path still applies when we start using compression. And over here on the left-hand side is what we call our capacity optimization engine. Essentially, this is responsible for actually performing all of the compression, otherwise known as the COE. And so for inline compression, it's really handled in two ways. We have our traditional write I.O. come in, and for larger I.O.s, Essentially what will happen is those will go directly to the capacity optimization engine and be compressed within memory before being written to the extent store. This is all done purely in line before it hits the actual disk device. For smaller IOs or IOs that are random in nature, essentially what will happen is these will be staged into our op log. What that allows us to do is coalesce them and then when they're actually drained from the op log, then become compressed before they're written to the extent store. What this allows us to do is essentially take smaller fragments, bundle them together, and then compress a much larger fragment into a much smaller one. So that handles inline compression. The next thing we'll be talking about is post-process. For post-process compression, realistically, the traditional Nutanix non-compressed I.O. path is followed. And essentially what that means is if I have my right I.O.s come in, any large or IOs that are sequential in nature will directly go to my extent store. So as an example, we'll just call this A. And then any random or small IOs will go and be directly written to my op log, coalesced, and then asynchronously drained into my extent store. And we'll call this B. From there, what will happen, there's really two things. One is it is integrated with our ILM framework. So essentially what we need is the data to become cold. So what this means is that data will be down migrated from the SSD portion of the extent store to the HDD portion. So if we take our example here, these will actually be moved down into the HDD portion. From there, we have what we call our post-process compression delay. And essentially this is a timer or duration where after that it is only eligible to become compressed. So if the data has been down migrated and it has been longer than our compression delay, then the data is actually eligible to become compressed. From there, it'll actually hit our capacity optimization engine and then be written back to the extent store in a much smaller and compressed state. One of the key things to highlight here is when we actually do this post-process compression, all controller VMs and all nodes within the cluster actually perform these operations based upon our curator framework. So that handles post-process compression on the Nutanix write path. So the next piece is what happens on a read request. So if I have a read request come in, say for example, uh, of block A, on the first read request what will happen is that will go into the capacity optimization engine, be decompressed in memory, and then the read I.O. would actually be served. For data that is heavily accessed or frequently accessed, what will happen is ILM will actually up-migrate that data. From there, Essentially, it can become uncompressed, written back into our extent store, and at that point, it can essentially leverage the exact same read path of any data. So it can go into our content cache and the read can be served, or it can go into our SSD tier and then be served from there. Uh, so that's an important thing. So essentially, we can allow it to be cached, um, or the read request can actually be served uh, from the SSD portion, et cetera. All right, so that covers how Nutanix handles compression, both on the right side and the decompression for read. Thanks for watching.